I was trying to remember the last thing we did <coughs> last time. And again, it's to me, I like to keep reminding students that I know I've said this several times. But all trig functions are, are ratios of sides of our triangles, right? And then you look at all the shit we've done. We did the crazy big ass triangle where I proved the sum and difference formulas and it's just kind of gone insane. Uh, so it's just the way we can manipulate things to get more and more and more information. So now we have stepped outside of right triangles and we've developed ways to use trig even if the triangle isn't a right triangle. Right? So we developed, last time we developed the law of sine. And what this thing says is that if you have a triangle, we call this alpha, beta, gamma. I don't know if we, the book uses gamma, little gamma. It's basically Greek A, Greek B, Greek C. This would be psi C, psi A, down it. Psi B. Does anyone remember what law of signs basically sets up for each? Say again. Sine of alpha over A equals sine beta over B equals sine gamma. If you don't like the Greek letters, you could put capital A, capital B, capital C. I just want to kind of show you a little bit of everything you could see in a, in a homework problem for the book. They use capital letters or they use Greek letters. Okay. We actually proved this. Yes, sir. We proved this. And, and the way we proved it, not surprisingly, was we created right triangles. Because fundamentally, trig functions are built from right triangles. So if I can find right triangles in a figure, I could use trig to do more with the whole figure. This is basically what this is saying. So let's try, um, let's try a couple of concrete examples. Remember, I think we did one yesterday, but um, let's try another one here. Oh, thank you, Julia. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Which one is working here? So what if I had Uh, let's see. Um, let's say this is uh, uh, what's that? Like Forty. This is um, seventy, and let's say that this is uh, five. Now the book is going to, in some problems, it's going to give you a picture. So let's do a problem like that. And then another problem that's not going to give you the picture. It's just going to tell you angle A is this and side A is this and so forth. So we'll try both things. So if you want to, you could label stuff. So somebody, if you want to, so like somebody tell me, what do you want to call this angle here? What, what letter? A, that's crazy. What about this guy? B, so then this guy is? C. Now, what does this side have to be? Little a. This side will be little c. And this side will be little b. Cool. And, th and we only do this to make it easier to just plug stuff into the formulas, right? Which, uh, so law of sines is basically ratios. Are you with me? It's sine of an angle divided by its side, and so forth. What is the complete ratio that I could make? Which angle and side make a complete ratio? Angle A. Yeah, so angle A, right? You guys see that? This makes a complete ratio. I got the angle, I got the side. So that's the, that's the guy. I, I can use that stuff to figure out anybody else. So if I want to figure out what B is, 
I'll say sine A over A equals sine B over B. So now let me fill in what I know. I know that A is 40 degrees, capital A. I know little a is 5. I know B is 70. And I don't know little b. So I don't care what functions are running around in an equation or anything. I've got one letter, one variable that I don't know I can solve for. Okay. How do you solve that for b? What, what can you do? What's kind of a nice thing you can do? Just I can cross multiply, right? So I get b sine 40 equals 5 times sine 70. And then, of course, what do I do to get little b by itself? Divide by sine 40. And then all of that you just throw into the old calculator, right, which I know some of you guys don't have, but you just have to put this in the calculator. I think mine is almost done, so that's good. Fabulous. Did they finally do this? Probably not. No, not yet. No, I don't want that. I know, it's almost dead. So 5 times sine 70 divided by sine 40. Make sure I'm in degrees. Does anyone else get that? Say again? 5.19, is that what you said? Nope. 7.31, right? I'm not sure what happened. Let me see what happened. I think I know what happened. Did you close the parenthesis when you did a sign? No. Okay. Are you in degrees? No, you're in radians. If I make it radians, I get the same answer you do. Okay. And trust me, I think I told you guys, I did a whole quiz in the wrong mode, right? So I completely understand about forgetting to change the mode from degrees to radians or vice versa. What makes sense about this so far? So now we know psi B is 7.31. Why does that make sense so far? Yeah, the angle opens up more, right? So this side should be bigger than that side because the angle opens more. Now look at this. Uh, I don't know angle C. Well, do I, do I really not know angle C? Can anyone tell me what angle C is? Yeah, isn't C 70 also? So can anyone tell me what side C is? 7.31, right? And that kinda, is that always going to happen? Hell no, right? Do you guys understand what we just what just happened? Isn't C, why, how did we get 70 degrees for C? Because of course all angles have to make 180. 40 and 70 is 110, so that has to be 70 to make 180. And if these open the same amount, these two have to be equal. What kind of triangle is that when these two angles are the same down here? Isosceles. I love it. So isosceles have to have the same lengths on the sides also because the angles open the same. So this problem right here had less work because the angle came out the same. That's always nice. It's not, it's not going to happen at all, if, if, if at all. It's not going to happen much. Okay, so that was a nice one. That was a nice one. But do you guys, when can I use law of sines? When I know an angle and I know the side across from it. So real quick, if I had, um, if I know this was seven, this was six, and this is um, 252 degrees, can I use law of sides? Can I make a complete ratio? Do I have an angle and the side across from it? No, and I really want you to, do you guys understand? I can't, I can't make an equation from these that only has one unknown. 
All right, so I'm going to actually, let me see, I'm going to draw this somewhere so I don't forget. We're going to do this one later today. So guess what that's going to use? Holy shit. Yeah, it's going to use law of cosine. The really nice thing is that anything that law of sines doesn't work for, law of cosines will work for, and vice versa. They kind of complement each other. Okay, maybe. So I'll do that one later. Um, now I want to bring this weird little dude over. Let's see. Alright. So, do you guys remember, uh, I don't really like to require students to look at it this way, but I want to remind you of something. Do you guys remember in geometry? Don't worry, we're not going to suddenly start doing proofs. Does anyone remember geometry like in Angle, side, angle. Side, angle, angle. Side, side, angle. Do you currently have to remember that? No, I just wanted to know if you did. Um, so some of you guys remember that. And then there were a lot of proofs and so forth. It was a lot of fun. Um, in the event that, if I am told uh, a side, let's say I'm told this side, let's say I'm told this angle, is something, I don't know. Uh, I don't even want this side to be specific. Let's just say I'm told this side and I'm told this angle. I know what those are. And I also am told, let me call this um, B. So I know what A is and I know what angle B is. But I also know side B is this long, right? That's side B. So this, I'm told, this is side B. So where should that go? Shouldn't that go over here somewhere? Okay, okay. I really want this to be understood. I know how much this opens. I know how long this is, and I know how long the other side is, right? Do I know how long, what they told how long this side is? Nope. So I have no idea. It could be as long as it needs to be. You guys understand so far? So a lot of these things are, given these pieces, can I put together a triangle, right? So watch this, this is kind of nifty. If this is side B, if I try to do it straight up and down like a right triangle, does that work? Because it comes past the bottom, correct? If, in order for that to work, I'd have to open this more, and I'm not allowed to because they told me it's, it's a specific number. So this can't be a right triangle. Are you with me? Can't be a right triangle because that doesn't work. But what does work is if I shift it over a bit. Isn't that a triangle there? Mm -hmm. Is that the only one that works? What if I shift it this way? Isn't there another really freaky looking triangle over there? So, this stuff, law of signs, will sometimes allow for two different answers. And the only time it works, the only time it does that is if it's, uh, so I was given a side, 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 angle, which is the normal way that it's told to students, but the way it should be told is this is angle, side, side, because it makes a problem for me, right? So this is a way to remember. If I have an angle, and another side, and another side, that's going to be a problem for me. I don't know if you guys understand what I'm saying. So angle, side, side. That's an angle because it's going to make it, there's a possibility that there's two answers. So one answer could be uh, this, and another answer could be this. Do you see how this is the same length as this? Because was I told what this angle here is supposed to be? No. Was I told what this angle here is supposed to be? No. no. So they can be whatever they want to be. So if I'm given this angle, this side, and that side, and I want to construct a triangle, well, there's two different triangles I can make. Oh, shit. So what will that kind of problem look like? OK, let's do that kind of problem.
attack one of us. Uh, so, so to make sure that I get one that has two answers, I want to steal a problem from the book. If I just try to make one up, I might not get the amounts right. So let me give it to you the way the book would give it to you. So they tell me that angle A is 35 degrees. They tell me that side A is 6. And they tell me that side B is 8. So let's kind of draw, and just, just, I'm just going to draw a triangle. Because I don't know. I'm just going to draw a triangle. Uh, let's make this angle B. I'm sorry. Let's make this angle A. There we go. So that's angle A. We'll make this side A. And let's make this uh, side B. So then I got angle C. So they didn't give me the triangle. They gave me this. So then I just draw some arbitrary triangle. And you put the R with this side? Totally, yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. You, you could have put angle B there and angle C there. We're going to get end up with the same answer. You just have yours kind of rotated versus mine or reflected or whatever. It's going to be the same triangle. I like it. Hmm? Is there a best way? No. Um, it really is, it doesn't, that's a, part of the beauty of it, it doesn't matter, but it also sucks because now there's multiple ways you can do it, but they'll all come to the same answer. As long as you've got this across from this, you're golden. Wherever anything else goes, doesn't matter. Okay. So let's, let's start to do this. I already know going in, you guys know going in that I've made one that's going to have a funky answer. Um, which angle can we solve for? Immediately. Huh? Yes. Because, okay. Which uh, side angle makes a complete ratio? A. Which side angle has at least one thing that I know in it? B. And which side angle do I not know shit about? So if I try, now real quick, this is silly, but if I, if I tried to set something up to figure out C, I would do the sine of A over A equals sine of C over C. I have too many things I don't know. I can't solve that. There's too many variables. I got capital C and lowercase c. How do I don't solve that shit? There's too many variables, right? So I, I won't. If I solve for angle B, won't I then be able to get angle C? Yes? Okay. So I'm going to do B first because I know something about B. I know little b is 8. Does everybody get that? I need to choose the one that's got only one unknown when I set it up. So what's that going to look like for B then? It'll be sine of A over little a equals sine of capital B over little b. I love it. Now let's see if you guys can you solve that for angle B. What function are you going to have to use eventually to get B free? Inverse sine. Inverse sine. Okay. So if you don't have a calculator, I'm sorry. You just hang out. I'll show you what it would look like. As long as my calculator doesn't run out of juice. We'll see. All right, so let's start to solve this. Um, here's the B. Here's what I want to solve for. Right? So I'm going to multiply by 8. Is that cool? Get that over there. So I know sine D equals 8 times sine of 35 degrees divided by 6. I'm going to show you something. Uh, if you put that in your calculator right now, you're going to get some big-ass decimal for damn sure, yes? Because sine of 35 degrees is going to be something funky. So, so don't. How do I solve for B? What do I have to do? Inverse sine. That's the only way to kill this sine is to apply the inverse sine. Just like if I had x cubed equal to 8, the only way to kill the cube is with the inverse cube, which we call cube root. So if I apply, if I apply the inverse sine to both sides, 
deeds kill each other by definition. So don't I know what B is now? B will equal whatever that is. So how do I put that in the calculator? Let's see if my calculator is still alive. I know. We're almost dead. Uh, let's see. Inverse sine of 8 sine 35. Let me make sure I'm in degrees. Yes. Close the parentheses. 8 sine 35 divided by 6. So I can do that whole thing in there. So I don't have to write a billion decimals out, all this kind of crap. Inverse sine of 8 times sine 35 divided by 6. Let's see what we get. All right, so everything seems fine so far, right? So I'm gonna tell you on a test, I'll tell you how many decimal places to go. I normally like at least two decimal places, so what would that be? 49.89. So real quick, okay, here's where things get intriguing. The, the first problem we did, by the way, is this still up here? Oh, shoot. Oh, yeah, I just read it. Sorry. The first problem we did was not uh, um, a, an angle side side. It wasn't an X. That's why we only had one answer to it. Angle angle side? Say again? Angle angle side? I think so. Yeah, it was angle angle side. Thank you. Say again? I think it's the one on the right here. Oh, really? 76? No, no, no. I think I erased it. I think it used to be. I think it used to be right here. Okay. Um, so watch this, watch this, watch this. So if you notice, you have angle, side, side. When you get this, you have to see, could another triangle exist? So currently, this is 49.89 degrees, right? But do you remember how if I swing this in, there could be another triangle here. So how do I determine if another triangle is possible? Okay, so right now, help me out. Right now with this triangle here, what is angle C? Help me out. What do you have so far? 35 plus 49.89. And then you subtract that from 180, right, to see what's left over for angle C. Say, I'm sorry? Yeah. 95.11? Okay, sounds about right. Okay, that so far is correct. The minute I got two angles, I got all three, because I know they have to add up to be 180 degrees, right? Okay, that's cool, that's cool. So let me call this B1. And let me call this C1. So let's check if another triangle exists. So somebody tell me, if this other triangle exists, this angle is going to be way bigger than that. Do you guys see how that angle is way, it's bigger than 90 degrees, yes? Let me see if you guys can get this. Um, this doesn't look like it, but this is isosceles here, right? Because this is the same length as this. So this angle would equal 49.89. Do you guys see that? If this side is six, I could scoot this over and make this side six. So isn't this an isosceles triangle? So if that angle is 49.89, what's this angle here? Also 49.89. So what's this angle over here? 180 minus that, it's a straight line, total. So to get that angle there, it's 180 minus that. What's that 180 minus that? Yeah, that'd be 130.11? Yeah. And, well, let's see. A second triangle exists if it leaves room for this angle up here. What do I mean by that? 
Uh, look at this little sliver triangle. The little sliver triangle here. So, all right, guys, let's go to show. We sort of draw this decently enough. So that little sliver triangle, right? I just drew it by itself. So this angle was given to me, correct? I can't do anything about that angle there. Yeah, thank you, finger. Let's see. Wow. This angle was given to me in the problem, right? 35 degrees. Can't do shit with it. This angle down here, we got from shifting this over. 130.11. Is there room for this angle to exist? What is this so far? 165.11. So sure, yeah, there is. So I really want you to get this. If you do this work, and then you do 180 minus this, and what you get added to the one you know already is more than 180, then a second triangle can't exist. But these added together are less than 180. Mm -hmm. So a second triangle could exist. What would this angle up here be? If that's 35 and that's 130.11, what's that angle? 14.89. So we'll call that C2. So when we did this, we got C was 95.11, right? Then we check to see if another angle, uh, another triangle could exist. And yes, so that means I got B2 is this. So that means C2 is 14.89. Uh, so again, I really want this. This is really, really strange. Here, you go for number that way. So what we got is this is the first triangle we found. If I move this over, you see how that, this angle gets way smaller, right? This angle in there gets way smaller than it was. And this angle gets way bigger than it was. So that's why sometimes there is a second triangle that exists. Okay. So, what do you do now? Okay, so what I do, what, this is what I always do in these problems. I'll calculate an angle, see if another triangle exists. Now, am I done with this first triangle? Do I know everything about this first triangle? I know side A, I know side B, I know all the angles. What's the only thing I don't know? Side C, right? So how do I figure out, so for the first triangle, how would I figure out side C? Let's see how I can do this. Uh, yeah, you got you on the picture. Okay. So if I'm going to figure out side C, I can just do this again now, right? But with C. So I got sine 35 over 6 equals sine of, I don't know what C is. I, I, I do know what C is. What was C? C is 95.1. I don't know what little c is. So everything about triangle one, here's what I got directly from solving this was this one. We see that there's a second triangle that exists. We'll worry about him in a minute. Let's finish this first triangle out. So if B1 is this, C1's got to be that. So I've got all my angles. There's only one side I don't know yet, and that's that side C. So let me set up an equation that it relates something I know with what I don't know, and then I can solve this. Cross multiply. So I'm just going to kind of get there. 6 sine 95.11 divided by sine of 6. No, it's sine of 35. Is that cool? Multiply the C up. Multiply the 6 up. Divide the sine down. Let's see what we get here. I know it's low. Okay. Six times sine of 95.11 divided by sine of 35. I'm still in weird, weird chess. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I get 10.42. So this would be C1. Now for the second triangle, I still know B, I still know A, so I still don't know little c, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know little c2. So how do I get little c2? I do the same thing I just did, except for that triangle, right? So I can still set up sine of A, divided by little a equals sine of c, which is now this little dude, divided by little c. Same thing, just different angles. Right? The idea doesn't change, just what I use in it changes. So now I can multiply the c up, multiply the 6 up, divide the sine 35 down, and then throw that in the old calculator. Let's see if my calculator can survive. Okay, 2.69, those will be C2. Crazy size. So there are two triangles. One is this guy where C is big, right? 10.42. And the other one, it makes, look how tiny C is. It makes sense because it got smooshed when I swung this over. It got smooshed. 2.69. Little tiny dude. And it, go, and it makes sense also because it's across from the smallest angle in the whole triangle. Is that, is that cool? Whereas over here, C ended up being the largest angle, so of course it was across on the largest side. This is weird, but it's actually something physical. You can see if I swing this over, it could make another triangle. Will it always make another triangle? No. I lost it. In fact, let me see. Was this where I was? Yes, this is where I was. Um, if I had this for this situation, let's say it's not this long, it's only this long, can a triangle even exist? It's too short. Too short, right? So if they, if they give me the sign, it's too short, I'm actually going to get here and going to do an inverse sign and it's going to be like error, doesn't exist, okay? Then there's no triangle. There could be no triangle. So there could be no triangle. There could be exactly one triangle if this was exactly the right size. Or there could be two triangles. Say again? Could be no triangles, one triangle, or two triangles. Yeah. So no triangles, one triangle, two. It could be any of those situations. Very much like solving an algebra equation, you can have uh, no answer, one answer, many answers. You can have, you know. Yeah. Okay. Is that only applies to A ASS? It only applies to ASS, which is why calling it the ASS um, um, situation makes more sense because it's the one situation that's going to be an ass and make things difficult, right? If I have uh, side angle angle. I don't have to worry about looking for two triangles. It's only this situation that's going to make it possible for one of the sides to swing over. Right? Now, uh, let's see. Okay. Let's see. Do I have enough time? I think maybe. Are these two separate? Yeah, I think. All right, let me do this. I'm going to try to. Um, what's better? what's better right now. Let me just give you this. Mm. I'm trying to think with the amount of time you got left. Here's the practice set. Practice set of the test on Tuesday? Tuesday, yeah. 
by the way, just to let you know, I'm giving us all Wednesday off. I think I told you that already. I told you to be careful if I took other classes. I have no idea if there are other Wednesday classes they're going to be. What is it? Yeah. It's the day before Thanksgiving, so I always give my students that at least that day off so that if they have to travel, you could do so. Uh, now, I don't know. Uh, there is a... I thought break started on the 23rd. Thursday. Break starts Thursday. Oh. Thursday and Friday. Okay. It's really pathetic. Last, semester, last year, we had a full week yeah. for Thanksgiving. And just because that's the way the calendar shook out. This semester, no. But I always think it's so evil because I know some students have to travel pretty far to go home. Right. So I try to give at least that Wednesday off. Say again? Going through December a little bit longer then? Going through December a little longer. Yeah. No. Yeah. I planned this out from the beginning. So. Oh. Well, well, I mean, again, I've already tried to make certain sections extra credit so we can kind of try to get through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. I think. Oh, what's my, let's see. I think I want you guys to try out number six right now. See number six down at 6A. Let's go ahead and try that one out. So you're going to need to draw your own triangle. What situation is that? Oh, shit. doesn't matter what your triangle looks like at first. You just got to make sure if I put 42 degrees here, what has to go here? 8.1, yeah. So angle A has got to be a size across from your side A. Okay. And then it doesn't matter where the other things go. So I don't know what everybody did. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put B uh, I don't care, here. Which means this will be 6.1. Is that B? 6. Six. And now here's C. Little C. And again, it doesn't matter if you put C and D separate, it doesn't matter. Okay. That's just turning the triangle around. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, this this year is true, so you can use any two that makes sense in the moment. So you can use these two, you can use these two, you can use these two, because the, they're equal to each other all the way through. Yeah.
So what's the definite one you can set up that you know everything? Yes, sine 42. Good, over 8.1. Sine who? I'm sorry, yeah. Sine B? It's over 6. So the only thing you can't do is C. You, can't, you don't know shit about C. So you got to just leave them alone for now. So sine B equals 6 sine 42 over 8.1. Please, calculator, just one, just do one more thing for me. One more sine of six sine forty-two divided by eight point one. Yeah, twenty-nine point seven one. So that's B one, right? Sorry. All right, let's see. So B one is twenty-nine point seven. Where you go? One. So that's one option for angle B. Bless you. How do I check to see if the other option exists? So here, real quick. If B1 is 29.71, what's angle C1? Yeah, 29.71 plus 42 is uh, 71.71. So 108.29? So how do I check to see if another triangle exists? I'll take a look at um, the other option for B2 is 180 minus this guy. So what is 180 minus 29.71? Uh, this will be 150.29. Now, real quick, real quick, sir, yeah, is that cool? So, if B was trying to be 150.29, does that work well with the angle we were given? Yeah. If that is 150 something plus 40 something, that's, that's more than 180. So, this is a situation where there could have been a second triangle, but there isn't. Do you guys see that? Uh, it's hard to figure out. Uh, it's All right, sorry. Let me point one thing out. Is my triangle drawn to scale? Does that look like a twenty-nine? It doesn't matter, right? I just want to make sure you guys understand. I didn't know what it was going to be, so I just kind of gave myself a, 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 a basic triangle just to kind of put it in there. Right. If I wanted to redraw it, I could. I have to make this angle really tiny. Right? And you know, that, that's because 150 plus 22 yeah. The only other option for B is to be 180 minus the first B. But if, if it tried to be 150, that's 42. I can't make a triangle because that's already more than 180 degrees. There's no room left over for C. Uh, okay. So if, then, the, if the second possibility for B, plus the angle I know already, is less than 180, then a second triangle exists. And that's where you do 180 minus 180. I don't know. 180 minus angle C? Well, no, if the second triangle existed, B would be this. Okay. And then I have to do sine stuff to figure out what side C is. So, if this was true, C2 would equal 180 minus what these two are. Okay. But that's negative. Okay. So that can't be. Okay. It's just the fact that whenever I get here, the other option for B is 180 minus that, but that doesn't leave any room for a third angle. It's already more than 190. 
So what's the only thing I don't know about the one triangle we have? Side C. Side C. And then that's not too bad, because now I can just use the same thing, except I'm gonna use it for C. Angle C is 108.29, and side C I can solve for, right? Okay, I like this. So that would be uh, multiply the C up, uh, multiply the 8.1 up, divide the sign down, and whatever that is, sorry? 11.5. 11.5? Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Why does that make sense? It's the biggest angle, and that's the biggest side. Right? So you can kind of make sure that your, angle, your triangle at least makes sense. So we, we don't have time to do this, obviously, but I just, I got to show you this. I, I, this is section 8.2. We're going to prove this after the next test. So this test is only going to go up to, not 8, I'm sorry, 10.2. Uh, 10.2. Ten two. Ten two. So this next test is only going to go up through 10-1. But just real quick, uh, we all know this. That's crazy, right? That works for a right triangle. But what if I had a not right triangle? We're going to prove this. But here's what's neat. So let's say this is um, angle C. Uh, this is C. This is B, angle B. This is angle A, and this is A. So cool, you ready? We're gonna prove this, but I just wanna show it to you. It's such a beautiful thing. This is not a right triangle the way I've drawn it, correct? No. So here's the adjusted. If I have a triangle that's not a right triangle, it still has this, but now it's adjusted like this. Now watch this real quick. If this was a right triangle, angle C would be 90 degrees, correct? Because that's the hypotenuse in this equation, right? If angle C is 90, what's cosine of 90 degrees? What's cosine of 90 degrees? Zero. Zero. Doesn't that whole thing go away? So when C is a right angle, this just becomes our normal Pythagorean theorem. Right. This is the real Pythagorean theorem for all triangles. If I'm lucky and one of them happens to be 90 degrees, it just becomes our, the Pythagorean theorem we know. We still have to prove this, but I just want to show you this. It's such a cool thing. There's the Pythagorean theorem, and this is just an adjustment if it's not a right triangle. Really cool. Okay. I think that's plenty for today. So next time, which is tomorrow, I'll have the quizzes graded. I'll have the answer key for the practice test uh, and just come ready with all kinds of questions. Do you think the test from 8.3 to 10.1? 8.3 to 10.1. Yeah, law of cosines we didn't really do. I just kind of showed you.